maybe some of you have heard and seen stories about the character Niuwa. She is the greatest ancient goddess in Chinese mythology, the only goddess who was listed as one of the three sovereigns and five emperors. The most popular story about Niuwa is, Niuwa mends the heaven. So who is this goddess? What are her stories? What roles does she play in Chinese culture? Let's join my journey, and explore all the mysteries behind this character. Who is Niuwa? Niuwa, pinyin Niuwa. With new means, female. And wa can be translated it as, lovely, but notes that it, could have other meaning from same pronunciation as, frog, or, helix, which are consistent with her myths. She is also known as, Niuwa clan, Niuwa shir. Wa queen, Wa huang. Nuxi clan, Niu shi shir. The commonly name is Niuwa Empress, Niuwa Nyang Nyang. Niuwa was a clan leader of ancient China, gradually recognized as an ancestral goddess in Chinese mythology. At that time she was the greatest ancient goddess in Chinese mythology, listed as one of the three sovereigns and five emperors. She is the sister and wife of Fuxi, who stands first row in three sovereigns list. If you don't know who Fushi is, you could watch my first video about him on the link above. He was the explorer of Yin Yang, Five Elements and Early Heaven Bagua. Niuwa got a lots of folk talks that I will tell you right in this video along with her impacts to Chinese through eight parts. Part 1. The Origin Story of Panku, the Chaos God. Part 2. Niuwa and Fushi. Part 3. Niuwa made mankind from clays. Part 4. Niuwa mended the heaven. Which include killing black dragon to save central land story. Part 5. Niuwa's death. Part 6. Niuwa in ancient texts and novels. Part 7. Niuwa's roles in Chinese culture and her symbolisms. Part 8. How Chinese Worships Niuwa. Part 1. The Origin Story of Panku, the Chaos God. The goddess Niuwa and her brother Fushi were the children of the earth goddess Hua Xiu. Hua Xiu arose from Panku, the creator of the universe. The story of Panku is quite interesting and important to Niuwa, so we will study about him first. In ancient times, the whole universe was still as chaotic as a huge chicken egg. In this chaos, there is a great being, that is Panku. After 18,000 years, Panku awoke from a deep sleep, surrounded by a black mass. Because of his extreme height 90,000 Chinese miles, equals 45,000 kilometers, Panku felt uncomfortable, wanted to relax his muscles a little, but the chicken egg enveloped him, making him unable to move. Panku grabbed the big axe and the chisel which weighed tons each, swung it with force, a loud cry rang out, the chicken egg quickly separated, from inside, the light and clear things slowly rose up, forming the heaven, the opaque and heavy things slowly sank to form the ground. Heaven and earth have been divided like that. Panku was afraid that heaven and earth would reunite, so his head was against the heaven, his feet were against the ground, keeping the heaven and earth to separate. After another 18,000 years, still Panku has been standing like that, now the heaven and the earth surely never reunited again. At this time, Panku's vitality was exhausted, and he fell dead. After that, Panku's left eye turned into the moon. His right eye turned into the sun his blood vines turned into river, lake and sea. Hair and beard turned into forests, fresh flowers and green grass. His voice became the thunder, his breath circulated into the wind. His happiness became nice sunny day as sadness turned into cloudy day. The head and body parts turned into the five great mountains of China, Wu Yue. These mountains are heavily connected with the five main cosmic deities of Chinese traditional religion, or five element school. 
To know what five elements are, you can watch in my YouTube album, Important Asian Theories, especially there is a video called, The Ultimate Guide to Five Elements, will help you understand them at both basic and advanced level. Back to the five great mountains of China, it would take a lot of time presenting these mountains in detail so I will just give you guys a quick tour about these mountains. We will start with the most important one, represent the east, Mount Tai, Tai Shan, in Shandong province, is believed to have been formed out of Panku's head. This is the place occurs the Mandate of Heaven, Tianming, is a Chinese political philosophy that was used in ancient and imperial China to legitimize the rule of the king or emperor of China. You can how it works by looking at this flow chart. Throughout the history of China to legitimize the successful overthrow and installation of new emperors, including by non-Han Chinese dynasties such as the Qin. You can feel how important this mountain has been through its influence to ancient Chinese through these idioms. Mount Tai and Big Dipper, Taishan Beidu, is an epithet for a person of great distinction. Has eyes but doesn't recognize Mount Tai, Yo Yen Bu Shi Taishan, refers to an ignorant yet arrogant person. Stable as Mount Tai, one Ru Tai Shan is used to describe an entity that is very safe or firm. In Vietnam, there is also an old folk poem started with this sentence. Father's merit is as high as Mount Tai, Song Cha Nu Nui Tai Sun, this praises the father important role in each family, also the big abundance he takes. In Mount Tai, renowned Jade Emperor Temple. And the Azure Cloud Temple. You can also visit Midway Gate to Heaven by bus to enjoy the breathtaking view of this mountain. Represent the West, there is Mount Hua, Hua Shan, in Shangxi Province, is said to be Panku's feet. It is the highest mountain of those five. Also, it is the home of prominent Daoist monasteries where monks specialized in traditional martial arts, medicine, and internal alchemy. Represent the South, there is Mount Heng, Heng Shan, in Hunan Province, is said to be Panku's right arm. With over 1,200 different species of plants, 150 precious trees, and nine primitive forests along with peaceful temples and picturesque scenery, Mount Heng, Hunan, used to be a relaxing place for at least nine Chinese emperor in historian records. One famous place there in this Mudan is the Grand Temple which represents China's three major religions together, Taoism, Buddhism, and Confucianism. Represent the North, there is Mount Heng, Heng Shan, same pronunciation of the one in the south, but it locates in Shangxi, and it is said to be Panku's left arm. Despite of extreme climate and its isolation, there is a Daoist temple called the Shrine of the Northern Peak that was built in honor of a folk mountain god, it was built in Han Dynasty, 206 BCE, 220 CE, and has been experienced continuous usage until the present day, about 2000 years in a row, an amazing number. There is also a Buddhist temple called the Buddhist Hanging Monastery. Last but not least, represent the center, there is Mount Song, Song Shan, in Hunan province, which is believed to be Panku's belly. Do the word Shaolin Temple remind you of something? If you ever watched a Chinese martial art movie, you must know about it. This is the house of the world famous Shaolin Temple, a temple renowned for its monk's strict discipline and martial power. It is also the birthplace of Zen Buddhism. In the neighboring area, appears the first established Daoist temples in China, the Central Mountains Zhongyue Temple. Not to mention, at the foot of Mount Song, there is an ancient city Dengfeng which has the Confucius Songyang Academy. Part 2. Niuwa and Fushi. Back to the main story, after Panku died, appears a powerful being called Huashu, the Earth Goddess. One day, Huashu was impregnated after she stepped in the footprints of Lei Gong the God of Thunder. Later Huashu born the twins Niuwa and Fushi, who were said having faces of human and bodies of snakes. In a creation myth, after surviving the apocalyptic flood in their childhood, Niuwa and her brother Fushi were the only humans left on Earth. They wanted to marry each other to repopulate the world, since they are sister and brother so they had to ask the permission from the gods through prayers. 
Niwa and Fushi agreed to get married if the smoke from the bonfires they made came together into one instead of rising straight to the sky. So they each made a fire atop two mountain peaks, watching the smoke rise. The two pillars of smoke did not rise up but instead swirled together and combined into one. With this blessings of heaven, Niwa and Fushi got married, becoming the first husband and first wife, also the parents of all humankind on earth. Part 3. Niwa Makes Mankind From Clays This is another creation story about Niwa, this time without Fushi appearance, just Niwa being the only creator of mankind. One day she commemorated Panku who opened the heavens and earth, created mountains and lakes, animals, changed the stillness of the world. However, Niwa always felt that this world was still missing something. While Niwa was meditating, looking down at the water of the Yellow River, at that time, the water was clear blue, the surface of the water was like a mirror, imprinted with her image. Niwa realized that the world lacked of a person like her. She referenced the appearance of herself, using the wet clay of the Yellow River to create a human body, and then using magic to bring that clay to life into a real person. One time she molded a man, the next she molded a woman. After finish molding a person, she blew a breath on that person, and then placed it on the ground. This clay person immediately turned into a living creature, knowing how to run, jump, talk and laugh. She continued molding many more. Those people turned into a group of people surrounding Niwa, dancing and shouting enthusiastically, calling her mother. Niwa created hundreds of clay people, but grew tired of the laborious process. Then she dipped a rope in the clay mud, and swung it around her. The handmade clay people, became the wealthy and the noble, those that arose from the splashes of mud were the poor and the common. But Niwa knew she could not mold herself forever, it is necessary to give them the ability to reproduce so that they can develop their own race. So Niwa blew Yang Chi into healthy and bold-shaped clay people, those figures became men. She blew Yin Chi into clay people that looked weaker, which became women. Niwa also endows those two with sex's organs to reproduce. After creating humans, Niwa always looked after them. But then realizing that people born at that time lived with each other without morality, so Niwa came down from the heaven and taught people the morality of marriage, meaning and duty of husband and wife. And so she became the god of marriage. Part 4. Niwa Mended the Heaven In Shirji of Sima Qian, there is a story like this. In the heavenly palace, the water god Gonggong rebelled and brought the evil army against the heavens. Fire god Jurong then brought his army to fight, and finally suppressed the bandits. Taking great defeat, the water god was both ashamed and angry, thinking that he had no face to live in the world anymore, he hit his head on the Mount Bujo, Bujo Shan, to commit suicide. But the force was not strong so he just got fainted. When he woke up, he continued to harass you, the great Da Yu, who was working on flood control. In addition, due to Gong Gong's head banging, the world suffered a great calamity. Originally, Mount Bujo was a pillar supporting the sky in the northwest, after being hit by Gong Gong, it was broken and bent down, so a corner of the sky has collapsed. This left huge holes in the air. The ground was cracked vertically into many deep pits, the mountains were on fire, the water was overflowing, and the waves were rolling. The earth instantly turned into vast sea, dangerous species spread out and brought destruction to places they came. People were burnt, drowned, and killed at the same time. Humanity was facing the danger of extinction. Seeing the emergency situation, Niwa was heartbroken and could not bear to see the people suffering, she resolved to mend the sky. She flew all over the places, looking for five colored stones, which are white, green, black, red, and yellow, to patch up the sky. But since Mount Bujo had been collapsed, the sky lacked of a supportive pillar, so Niwa used one of giant clam leg as a pillar to support the sky. This was a great and difficult job. 
But Niwa was always worried about the happiness of mankind, so the hardships did not make her discouraged. She was still determined to carry that burden alone. First, she gathered five colored stones from the great rivers, lit them on fire to make a glue-like substance, and used them to patch up all the holes in the blue sky. Fearing that the dome might fall again, she went to Ao, the sky turtle, and asked for his help. The turtle agreed to aid Niwa and allowed her to cut off its four legs. Niwa then put them in the four directions of the earth as four pillars to support the sky. From there, the sky was propped up, looking like a tent roof. The pillars this time were solid, no longer worry about the sky falling down again. At that time, in the plains, there was a ferocious black dragon raging to kill the inhabitants, Niwa immediately killed the dragon, chased all the dangerous species away, from which mankind was no longer afraid of being attacked. The last thing she had to do was prevent floodwaters from harming people. So she burned riverbanks reeds to ash and piled them up to block the flow of water. The calamity caused by the water god Gongong was solved by Niwa. Since then, prosperity has returned to the earth. For seasons of spring, summer, autumn and winter follows each other, obeys the rule of nature. The dangerous species were also gradually tamed, making friends with humans. Natural food was abundant, one could easily fill his belly with wild fruit and vegetable. Since then, people have lived happily without any fear. After all, to make people forget about terrible disasters happened and to make them happy, Niwa invented a musical instrument made of reed pipes, stitching thirteen tubes together, looking like a Feng Huang's tail, blowing up to sound very melodious and pleasing to the ears, giving it to people. That instrument called Sheng, a Chinese mouth-blown polyphonic free reed instrument consisting of vertical pipes. This is a Buddhist art from the Yulin Caves, Tang Dynasty, 618-907, showing musicians playing various instruments including a sheng. It is one of the oldest Chinese instrument, along with sheng, which I had a video about. You could also find the meaning of Feng Huang and the differences between Feng Huang and Phoenix in that video. Niwa also made another instrument called Hulusi, also known as the gourd flute, made of three bamboo pipes that pass through a calabash gourd. You can try searching this on YouTube, it sounds quite interesting and really brings Asian air into your room. Part 5. Niwa's Death in one version of the story, mending the sky drained Niwa's strength, and after laying down to rest, the goddess died of exhaustion. In another version, Niwa realized that she did not have enough stone to cover the patch in the sky. Therefore, she decided to sacrifice herself and filled the remaining gap with her own body. According to Classic of Mountains and Seas, Shen Hai Jing, a Chinese classic text and a compilation of mythic geography and beasts since 4th century BCE. After her death, her intestines created ten gods. Some people think that after Niwa's death, her clan ate her meat, because they thought that by doing that, they showed respects and felt safe. It sounds not right and scary to many other ethnics, even to other Asian. But I am here to tell you the truth, this story reminds me of Sky Burial of Tibetan, a funeral practice that let the human corpse be eaten by carrion birds. The last legend, after her death, Niwa was buried in a tomb in central highlands of Hunan province, Shiha district. Since Qin and Han dynasty, every year the monarchs came there to make great ceremonies. Part 6. Niwa in Ancient Texts and Novels the goddess Niwa originated in ancient Chinese mythological and philosophical texts. Niwa appears in the flooding of the world story in the Huainanzi, an ancient philosophical text from the 2nd century BCE. She is portrayed as the mender of the heavens in the Taoist text Li Zi, and creates human beings in the book of poems called Songs of Chu between the 4th and 2nd centuries BCE. She appears in the Dictionary of Written Chinese Characters, Shuo and Jiezi, from the 2nd century CE. The Duyizi, 
a 6th to 9th century BCE book of fantastical folktales, describes the heaven-approved union between Niuwa and her husband on Mdikunlun. One of the most famous modern fiction that mentions Niuwa is The Investiture of the Gods, also known by its Chinese names Feng Shen Yeni, written in 16th century, combines elements of history, folklore, mythology, legends and fantasy. Part 7 Niuwa's Roles in Chinese Culture and Her Symbolisms Niuwa is the goddess of nature, order, fertility, and marriage. Niuwa played numerous important roles in ancient Chinese mythology. She was simultaneously wife, mother, creator, goddess, human, and beast. Some of Niuwa's roles in Chinese mythology include The Mother Goddess Although Niuwa did not create the earth or the universe, she was the one who gave birth to mankind through the creation story, Niuwa made mankind from clays. The Marriage Goddess In Niuwa and Fushi's story, Niuwa was the first wife and first mother, giving birth to humankind. She also established the institution of marriage and the traditions around it. The Goddess That Restored Order In Niuwa Mended the Heaven story when the gods of water and fire fought a legendary battle, tearing a hole in the sky, Niuwa sacrificed herself to restore order to the heavens and earth by mending the sky. If you watched my videos about Yin Yang and Five Elements Theory, you could notice that there are some small details in Niuwa's stories relevant to Five Elements School. The five colored stones are white, green, black, red, and yellow stones. Those are the Five Elements color. And these stones are the ingredients to mend the sky. Just like the way five elements transform into Tian, the first Gua of the Bagua represent the heaven. Another detail is Panku was the one who separated the heaven and earth from the chaos. This illustrates how Yang and Yin could be drawn from the Taiji circle. Later, Niuwa and Fushi were the earlier representation of Yin and Yang, with Niuwa was the symbol of Yin as Fushi was for Yang. In some illustration, Niuwa is depicted holding a carpenter's square, while Fushi holds a compass. These instruments represent the order created by establishing the harmony of the universe or rules of the world. This reflects the first and second components in Yin Yang theory perfectly. Open my video about Yin Yang theory to learn about all four components of them from the link above. You will also get two interesting folktales inside it. Last part. How Chinese Worships Niuwa In Wang Sung's Analects, Luan Hung, quoting Dong Zhongshu, whenever it keep raining for a long time, people pray Niuwa hoping the rain would be stopped. It shows that the sacrifice to Niuwa has existed since ancient times, at least during the Western Han Dynasty, 202 BCE 9 CE. The explanation for this customs is that since Niuwa is a goddess, which bears the nature of Yin, and the rain that doesn't stop is inclined to Yin, so people has to pray to Niu Hua for the rain to stop. From the time of Emperor Taizong of Tang, 626-649, to the court had made a sacrifice to Niu Hua as the goddess of marriage. Niu Hua remains an important goddess in some regions, and many go to her temples to worship her. March 15th, lunar calendar, is said to be her birthday, and the locals sing sacred songs and perform folk dances for her. Women bring embroidered shoes to the goddess as a form of sacrifice, as well as burn them with paper money or incense, in hopes of getting her blessings for health, happiness, and safety. Together with Fushi, Niuwa is also worshipped as father and mother by the Tujia, Han, Yao, and Miao ethnic people. Some express their belief of ancestors and gods through these myths, while others regard these stories as a reflection of their local culture. The legend of Niuwa transcends time and reminds us that even in the face of chaos, we have the power to bring order and restoration. Thank you for joining us on this incredible odyssey through the myths of the most powerful goddess in Chinese mythology. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, subscribe, and share it with others who may find this journey as enlightening as we did. Again, I am John, your companion. Thank you for watching.